All right, all right, all right. This is actually pretty good news because the BYD seal is too expensive. It's just simply too expensive. Look at the price of this seal in Europe. It's about a couple of percent more expensive than the new Tesla Model 3 Highland. It doesn't matter how big of a BYD fan you are. By the way, I am a BYD fan. To those of you, I've said many, many positive things about BYD's blade batteries and their technology. It's it's good. But for BYD to come in and price the seal at that rate in Europe is concerning. And I think it means it's probably not going to do that well in Europe. However, Australia will get a cheaper version, which obviously will undercut the Tesla Model 3, I'm going to guess fairly significantly, giving it a key role to play, an affordable electric sedan, that is actually a pretty good size at a good price. Here's what we know about the new SEAL so far. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. If you'd like to come to the EV show in Melbourne, I'd love to meet you there. I'll be speaking at around 1 p.m. at the show on Saturday, the 23rd of September. The BYD SEAL. The SEAL actually has been a bit of a disappointment in terms of its sales for BYD. And if you don't believe me, have a look at the sales numbers in China. Obviously, BYD sells around 95% of its cars in China. Sales numbers for the SEAL have been much lower than other cars like the Dolphin, uh, the Addo 3, uh, many other different models of BYD sell completely crush the SEAL. And the SEAL has been available for quite some time now. It is very affordably priced. It's cheaper than the Model 3, significantly cheaper than the Model 3 in China. But people just aren't that interested anymore in sedans, in electric sedans. There's an oversaturation of them. People are kind of moving to SUVs. And so it's sort of a slightly bad timing in a way for the SEAL to be released now. I think it is anyway. But either way, hopefully people like this car because it actually is pretty good aside from, well, a couple of issues such as the software, which has been critiqued. Um, the ADAS as well has been critiqued pretty heavily by European car media. But aside from that, it's got a really good battery and I think it looks good. It's pretty big. Anyway, what else do we know? Well, this is BYD's third model that's coming to many places like Israel, Thailand, New Zealand, Australia, and others as well. You've got to keep in mind that BYD really, I think their biggest sellers will be the Addo 3, obviously the small electric SUV and the BYD Dolphin, which is on sale now starting at 39,000 Australian dollars here in Australia. That's about 27, 26,000 US dollars. Pretty good value, I think. Anyhow, we don't yet know pricing or full specifications for the seal, but we do know that there will be a cheaper version than what we had already known about. There's obviously two European versions currently. Both of them come with an 82 kilowatt hour blade battery, giving the car a fair bit of range. The rear wheel drive, single motor, 82 kilowatt hour version gives the vehicle around probably 550 kilometers of range, WLTP. It's a bit more than a Tesla Model 3, probably about 30 kilometers more. Then you've got the all wheel drive version with the same size battery pack. Now those are the two options available in Europe. However, We've now seen that there is going to be a cheaper version here. It'll be a single motor rear wheel drive powertrain, 160 kilowatts, it's around 230 horsepower. It'll do zero to 107.5 seconds, which is not too bad. It has a WLTP range of 460 kilometers. So a bit less range than the standard range Tesla Model 3, which has, I believe, 513 kilometers of range. So about 50, just over 50 kilometers less range. But I mean, I still think this is a, probably going to hit the sweet spot being a much more affordable version of the car having a significantly smaller battery pack which i believe is going to be about a 60 kilowatt hour pack should mean that you're going to pay a lot less money for it anyway the mid spec premium extended range increases power to the rear wheels that rear motor has 230 kilowatt so quite a bit more power about 300 horsepower and it actually increases range to 570 kilometers on the WLTP cycle. The range topic performance all-wheel drive version gets 390 kilowatt of power. That's quite a lot of power. It's about 500 horsepower from its 160 kilowatt front motor and 230 kilowatt rear motor. It can accelerate from zero to 100 in 3.8 seconds. 
So about half a second throw slower than a Tesla Model 3 performance, still very fast, very, very fast. I think you'll find it'll have more than enough speed for anyone who's interested in a performance electric sedan. That one though has less range because extra, extra weight from the front motor brings the range down, plus bigger wheels brings the range down as well. 520 kilometers of range on the WLTP cycle. There are four drive modes, Eco, Normal, Sport, and Snow. That performance model, what will that compete with? What's in the same category? Well, obviously the Tesla Model 3 performance is. However, Tesla is not currently making any Tesla Model 3 performances. We don't know what the specs are because we haven't seen the Highland version yet. Will there be a Highland version? Of course, but Tesla haven't revealed it yet. So we can't really compare the performance version of the SEAL with the new Model 3 Highland because we don't know yet how they compare. But we do know the size of both cars is very similar. The interior of the SEAL, it's a little bit bigger, slightly bigger by about two or three percent than a Tesla Model 3. And the car is 4,775 millimeters long, so a little bit longer. But with that extra interior space, it does have a much smaller boot. It's got a 402 liter boot, whereas the Model 3 has a 590 liter boot. So if boot space is your priority, might wanna consider the Model 3. If interior space is more important to you, then the seal might be a better choice. But either way, both of them, they're not really cars designed for practicality. They're sedans after all. So this, I think this is a really quite a good looking car. And it was designed by Wolfgang Egger, who used to be the head designer of the Audi group. Obviously, BYD poached him from Audi, and I'm going to guess they must pay him a fair bit of money. He does a pretty good job, I think. Interestingly, BYD claimed the SEAL has a drag coefficient of 0.219 CD. That would make it one of the most aerodynamic cars ever made in history. Don't know if that's really true. I mean, I personally am a bit skeptical of most claimed drag coefficients from most manufacturers, but either way, it sounds like it will be a fairly aerodynamic car regardless. Keep in mind, a lot of what you're paying for when you buy a new electric car is the battery pack. And it comes with, of course, BYD's blade battery. It's also got cell to body technology, with basically a structural battery pack. So after Tesla revealed its structural battery pack idea a number of years ago, BYD said, that's a great idea. And they just basically implemented them into all of their new EVs very, very quickly. Gotta love that they did that, it's a really good move. So what this does, it helps the car to be more rigid and it also gives the car lighter weight. So structural rigidity, less weight. And that's a pretty big improvement if you ask me. The other thing is the seal apparently handles much better than its brother. It's slightly bigger brother, the BOD Han, doesn't have a structural battery pack and its handling is not very good. It's just went in a moose test against some other EVs and it failed. It, well, it didn't fail, but it, it didn't do very well. The seal has done it much better. So I think we're getting the better car here. Some people like the Han, they prefer the look of the BYD Han, which is the, like I said, the slight, tiny bit bigger version of this, but it's really not as good. This is the newer version, but this is essentially the newer version of the Han. So what else do we know about this car? Charging speed. It's 150 kilowatt DC charging, and BYD say it can be charged in 26 minutes. Now, I'm intended to believe these claims because BYD's blade battery seems to charge at a faster speed in the Tesla Model Y than the CATL LFP battery, that Tesla use in the Model Y as well. What else do we know? Well, it is considered a sports sedan. It has double wishbone suspension up front, a multi-link setup at the back, and this works as well with its chassis control system. BYD says that its own manufactured Dysus intelligent body control system provides bespoke damper settings for each of the four drive modes to better control lateral and vertical movement along with matching suspension compliance levels. Now, I'm not sure this is actually true. Australian media is saying this, but from what I know, Dysus Intelligent Body Control System actually wasn't spoken about it by BYD until well after the seal was revealed in China, many, many months later. In fact, I think it was about 12 months later. And they mentioned this in the context of their new Fang Wang luxury, super duper luxury expensive brand where the cars cost, you know, upwards of a hundred thousand US dollars. I don't believe this actually has their Dysos Intelligent Body Control System, but apparently it does have some pretty decent suspension in it. 
It also is said to have an intelligence talk adaption control technology, basically its own version of talk factoring. You'll find that talk factoring in EVs is actually a lot faster to react than it is an internal combustion engine vehicle. That's one of the advantages of an EV actually, better traction. More likely you can prevent a crash as a result. Standard equipment in all models of the SEAL include a 12 speaker, 775 watt DIN audio sound system, I found the sound system in the Addo 3 to be not that good. I wasn't really that impressed by it, but it sounds like this one, the sound system in this car will be a big step up over what you're getting in the Addo 3. It also has an eight-way power driver's seat, a four-way for front passenger seat, four-way power adjustable steering wheel, and four-way lumbar adjustability for the top tier all-wheel drive variant. In addition, both the front seats in the mid and the top spec variants get heating and ventilation, Sounds like the cheaper model doesn't get that feature. That's probably good though, that you can choose to buy a cheaper version without that. I don't think personally, I don't really care too much about seat heating, but not everyone, I mean, a lot of people love it. So there's also a huge 1.9 meter panoramic glass sunroof, which is massive for a car of this size. And the SEAL's front doors are double glazed for better heat and sound insulation. There's also privacy glass. Now, it's worth pointing out the previous model of the Tesla Model 3, it only had the acoustic glass in the front and the current version Tesla have, have received criticism saying they, the rear passengers can hear too much road noise. So Tesla have now put acoustic glass in all the car, including the rear window, the back window and the back windows for the passengers. Sounds like to me that um, BYD have just done what Tesla did in the older Model 3 and had the acoustic glass for the windscreen and the front side windows. It'll be interesting to see how that goes in real world testing. Now, speaking of real world testing, reviews have been pretty mixed. To be honest, reviews haven't been that positive for the SEAL in most Western countries. The average score it's gotten is between six and seven. Uh, Top Gear gave it a six. I actually think it's good because you've got to remember that you're getting what you pay for. Now, what are you paying for when you buy an EV? Well, around 40% of the cost of your EV is your battery pack. Now, if Mercedes is planning on using BYD's Blade batteries in its new EVs, if Toyota uses them, if Tesla uses them, then you've got three big companies saying the Blade battery is really good. So I think we know that it is good. And if 40% of the cost of your car is the battery pack, then they're actually pretty good value, even if they do have some other things that are you know, considered weaknesses, which would be fair to say. Just worth keeping that in mind when you buy a car. What are you actually paying for? Thanks for watching.